In the last video, I went through the elements of the Evernote home screen, so I hope you're now comfortable with knowing where the most important options are. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about how Evernote is structured and how you might want to structure your account. So let's begin with looking at how notes and notebooks fit together. Before we begin, I'm releasing regular video tutorials, so if you'd like to keep in touch, please subscribe to my channel. At the bottom level in Evernote, you have a note. It's an individual note which you can add all kinds of content from text, images, video and audio, etc. Above that, we have the notebook, where we can add our notes, and above notebooks, we have an optional third level called a stack, and a stack can be a series of notebooks. Now, what you need to get to understand is that in Evernote, you can't create a folder hierarchy like you do on your computer. I don't know about you, but I always like to organise my data into folders that are named in a way that I know what is in them, and then I store my relevant files in that folder. In Evernote, everything is stored and lives in Evernote as a note, so you can't put your files into Evernote like you would on a PC. However, you can attach files to your note, which I've already mentioned. It's a bit of a personal preference on how you set up your account. I tend to create a notebook, call it by a client's name, and then put all my notes relevant to that client in that notebook. I haven't used stacks that much, but what I intend to do is set up a stack called clients and then add all my notebooks into that stack. That's one way of doing it. I know that some people don't create notebooks or stacks, but simply create notes and then tag them in such a way that they can search for those notes. And I'll be talking more about tags in a later video. So it's completely up to you how you do it. But stop. Before you go away and start using Evernote, ask yourself this question. How big is my business going to be? Here's a question I recently received, so just consider this for a moment. We've been using Evernote for our real estate business for several years. When we get a new client, we create a new notebook. Apparently, we've just reached the limit of 250 notebooks, which I never knew existed. So what do I do? Well, I don't have hundreds of clients like some businesses, so my structure works for me. But if you do, then here are some stats that you might be interested in so you can make a decision on how you're going to set up your Evernote account. Looking at these stats then, you can see you can get 100,000 personal notes in Evernote, which is a hell of a lot more than you can get in OneNote, which is Microsoft's equivalent. 5,000 people can share a business notebook with you. You can have 100 tags per note. As I say, I'm going to discuss tags later on in another video. 100,000 tags per account and 250 notebooks. So if you've got more than 250 clients, as in the case of that um, question I received, then creating notebooks for each client may be not the route to go down. Now we've looked at the structure, let's take a quick look at how a note is laid out. So each note is going to have a title. So this is what you're going to call your note, and it's the list of titles you will see in the note list. If you're going to be using Evernote for business, then you will need to think about coming up with some type of naming convention, especially if you're going to be only creating notes and not the structure of notebooks and stacks. So let's pretend we've moved ahead in time by one or two years and an old client has contacted you to work with them again. How are you going to remember which notes were for a specific job for that client? Let's think of how you might search for that specific project and how you can use that information now to name your note. You could include the client's name and that would be fine, but that wouldn't make each note unique. So if you have a 100 notes for that client and they're all called something like LGK Logistics, for example, you're going to have to sift through each of them until you find the information you want. You could also put a date in the title. The note does generate the date created automatically, but if you put that in the title, this would make it more unique and make it easier to see. So an example might be 8th of the 9th, 2015 LGK Logistics Web Content Approval. Bearing in mind, I'm in the UK and we have a funny way of displaying our date formats. So if you're in other continents, then your date format will look different. The sort of naming convention will make your note more unique and easier to search for. Moving on, you can see that here is when the note was created, and this is generated automatically by Evernote. If I click to edit the note, you will see that the date disappears and reappears if I continue to edit. And above the date, you can see the tags associated to that note, which gives extra description and makes it easy to find your notes. So in this video, I've gone through the Evernote structure and outlined some of the questions you should be asking yourself before you start building your business around this application. And in the next video, we will create a note and I will show you the different types of notes you can create. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and found it engaging. There are two ways to keep in touch. Either subscribe to my channel here or visit my website at www.tutoronline.co.uk.